Today we're going to talk about the brain and how to keep your brain really young and healthy. Sound good? Okay, so the raw material of the brain, which basically makes up the structure, a good portion of it is something called DHA. This is an omega-3 fatty acid. Okay, it comes from fish, uh, shellfish, and definitely cod liver oil uh, and salmon. So you want to start consuming more fish to get more of this to give your brain what it needs structurally. And in a growing child, it's extremely important, but in a pregnant female, it's even more important. Now the fuel that the brain prefers is ketones, way over glucose. It does need a certain amount of glucose, but don't worry about that because your body can make glucose from ketones and from fat and from protein. So we don't need to consume glucose to feed our brain. It prefers ketones. If you have glucose and ketones in the blood, the brain will always take ketones first. So if you're transitioning to ketosis, and let's say you have, I don't know, insulin resistance or you're pre-diabetic or you're diabetic and it takes longer, you can add MCT oil to beef up, no pun intended, your ketones to basically get more ketones in your brain and your brain will be happier. Uh, you'll have more energy. So let's talk about the different ways your brain can become damaged. Um, one way is to deprive it of magnesium. Now, when you have a subclinical magnesium deficiency, maybe you don't consume enough vegetables or food with magnesium, the energy that's generated in little factories called mitochondria in your neurons are gonna be deprived. And you're gonna lose the quantity and the density of these synapses, okay? So magnesium is really, really important. There's a type of magnesium that works way better for the brain than other types of magnesium. Magnesium L3 and 8. This magnesium has a special quality of penetrating the blood-brain barrier going in there and restoring these synapses and increasing the density of them. And it's great for increasing memory, cognitive function, learning, and extending your sleep a little longer as well. But don't forget to consume the green foods. And I'm not talking about lime green jello or pistachio ice cream. I'm talking about vegetables. Okay. Now, iron is a very um, toxic mineral for the brain and for the liver and for the heart if it's in excess amounts. It's very corrosive. It oxidizes the brain. If you find that you have high iron, it's a good idea to get tested. EDTA, it's a chelator, will help remove the excess. Just make sure you don't keep putting it back in by consuming certain supplements with a lot of iron. I'm gonna put a link down below with more information on this specifically. If you haven't seen my video on iron, it's really important. Um, okay, next thing is atrophy of the brain. If you have insulin resistance or you're pre-diabetic or you're diabetic, What's going to happen over time, the brain is going to have atrophy. It's going to shrink, and that's going to create a lot of problems with your cognitive function. To help mitigate that or reverse that, you want to do ketosis. How do you do ketosis? You drop your carbs, and you do intermittent fasting. Real simple. Now, certain parts of the brain have the capacity to grow new neurons. Thank goodness the parts of the brain that are involved with memory can regenerate. So to get new brain cells... Intermittent fasting is probably the most important thing. And also regular, consistent exercise can also help with that. And it will also increase this other thing called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is like miracle grow for your brain. And these are the two triggers. There's other triggers as well. Okay, zinc, very important in preventing something called amyloid placking. That's involved in Alzheimer's. So this is kind of uh, a type of protein that accumulates in this area right here of the synapses and it interferes with the communication between the brain and you start getting dementia. So zinc is very, very important in preventing this. The other thing that's really important in getting rid of amyloid placking is intermittent fasting and periodic prolonged fasting. Cell phones, very, very uh, dangerous to your brain. Okay, um, especially when you're holding it right here. Never hold your cell phone, you're gonna get EMF. If you haven't seen my video on that, you definitely need to watch it. This is not weird or a myth or something, it's real. You need, I put a link down below, but do not touch the cell phone to your skull while you're talking.
talking like this. Hold it out here or have on speakerphone and definitely don't use the Bluetooth. Um, I talk more about it in my video. And there's a couple things that can counter EMF radiation. Uh, niacin at 50 milligrams per day would be good. Also intermittent fasting is very beneficial. Vegetable oils, which cause a lot of oxidation and it's similar to the effects that glucose will give you as well as iron. So do not consume corn oil, canola, cottonseed, and soy oil. Instead, olive oil is much better. Okay, over here we have hypoxia, okay? That's a situation where you have a loss of oxygen in certain parts of your brain. That could come from many things. Let's say you had trauma to the head at some point. Let's say you had a stroke, TIA. Your, your parents dropped you on your head as a baby, or you have sleep apnea, and you're restricting the oxygen to your brain. Couple things to do. One is aerobic exercise. That's getting out there, walking or riding your bike, or a jog consistently every day that'll increase the oxygen to the brain. The other thing that's really hot is this hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I'm gonna put a link down below, but hyperbaric oxygen therapy has some serious hardcore research behind it. It's extremely effective, and um, you'll definitely wanna know more about it, especially if you um, wanted to fix this right here. You're basically put in a container and the oxygen is increased to uh, nearly 100%. Normally, the air that you breathe, it's like 21% oxygen. Well, in a hyperbaric chamber, they're going to increase it close to 100%. And with all the pressure involved, it's going to force oxygen into your lungs, into your blood cells, and through the entire tissues, up into the brain. So if there's any areas uh, of damage or pockets of hypoxia or ischemia, which is a lack of ox oxygen, it'll feed that and help heal those tissues. They use it for many, many conditions, but it's great for your brain. Next thing is ketones. Running your body in ketones will increase the O2 and decrease the CO2. Now there's another condition, which I believe many people have a subclinical version of this, but it's called Wernicke-Korsakoff. This is a B1 deficiency. It's gonna affect your memory especially in the development of new memories. It's gonna affect your gait eventually. It can bring you to apathy, affect your vision and sleep apnea. Simple B1. Uh, a lot of people are deficient in B1 and they don't even know it. Um, why are people deficient in B1? Simply because it's involved in the energy factory, mitochondria of the cell, when you're dealing with glucose. So if you're doing glucose or refined carbohydrates or sugar, you're gonna burn up your B1 very fast and you're gonna create a deficiency. So glucose, high fructose corn syrup, alcohol, white rice, will just burn this up and start to develop these conditions right here. There's a lot of other conditions that a deficiency of B1 can create as well. I put a link down below in the description of a talk I did on B1 at the summit in 2018. If you haven't seen that, that's a really good presentation. Now, when you're deficient in iodine, okay, it can affect your IQ. So if you'd like to keep your IQ up, iodine is the answer. All right, selenium. If you're deficient, you can have mercury toxicity because what happens is if there's too much mercury in the brain, it can lock up the selenium, and that's involved in the antioxidant network, uh, glutathione, for example, and then you're deficient in that, and now you, you can't really get rid of all the free radicals and the oxidation. So selenium is very, very important. And then vitamin D, which most people are deficient in that as well. If you're low in vitamin D, you're gonna have way more inflammation than you want of the brain as well. Also, you're not gonna have good sleep. So vitamin D is good for that. So how could you kind of condense all this data into five things? Here we go. Shellfish will give you zinc, copper, iodine, selenium, and DHA. Also, if you add in their other fish, fatty fish, halibut, salmon, and also cod liver oil, you're gonna get enough DHA as well. The sun, okay, get more sun, get more vitamin D. It's virtually impossible to get your vitamin D from food. So you have to get it from sun or just take it. Greens, dark leafy greens, folate, magnesium, potassium, keto, that's a given, intermittent fasting, vital, and regular 
exercise. There you have it. This is the summary right here. Thanks for watching. Thank you.